Hey, I'm Wanjiko Cairo with the Chicago Jazz Festival and the Jazz Institute of Chicago. And today we're talking with William Parker. William is playing at 7.45 p.m. at the Jay Pritzker stage. William, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, great, great. It's a little hot here in New York, but uh, I'm doing great. Uh, beautiful morning and um, every day is when you can see the sky and the sunshine and hear and, and filter this music that's going through you is a great day hey. and wonderful people. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I know you're out in New York. It must be great over there. We have a lot of artists coming in from New York this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us about the work that you're performing today. How has, what has been your inspiration for your performance? Well, what we're doing is a suite, okay, of several pieces, some new and some older pieces. And um, the inspiration is, is, it's about what has gone, like people like Fred Anderson, who ran the Velvet Lounge, we have a piece for him called um, uh, what, what You Got For Me Today. And because every time I visited Fred, I would come in from New York and he'd be down practicing. And I'd always tell him stories. I'm like a storyteller. And, uh, and so I'd tell Fred what was going on with his worthy constituent, Cala Perusha, Maurice McIntyre, or what the guys from Chicago were doing in New York that he didn't know about. So he'd always say, and, and so that's like a rousing, you know, boom piece. And then we're doing a piece called Wood Flute Song, which is dedicated to Don Cherry, a guy I played with in 1975. We did a week at the five spot, and I knew him since, like, 74. And uh, just a great musician, trumpet player, and he'd always have some wood flutes, introduce me to the instrument, the Dusangoni from Mali, and probably a, an ex exponent to bring in the idea of world music, which is basically music from around the world. So there's that piece is going to be included. Then uh, we're doing a piece called Huey's Sunset, which is in 7-4, which deals with my fictional character, Huey Jackson, who was an embodiment of hope for little kids. Like when I, uh, he lives in the Bronx where I was born, and he's actually me, actually. And, who, and he wanted to be a poet, but everybody was telling him, Huey, you got to work for the post office. You got to get a real job. And Huey would say, no, I want to be a poet. And so we eventually started the Little Huey Creative Music Orchestra to bring this idea of hope to all the little kids who live in, um, in the projects in the Bronx. So what are we doing? Th that and some other pieces uh, with organ, uh, Mr. Cooper Moore playing organ, uh, Hami Drake, who lives in Chicago, uh, trap drums, Rob Brown, alto sax, and James Brandon Lewis, tenor saxophone. Awesome. It sounds like you have a great mix of performers today. Now, you're from the Bronx. How has New York influence, how has that New York influence played a hand in your development as an artist? Well, it's really it's hard to say when you were born in New York and you're in the middle of it, in the middle of the fire, you don't notice the flames. So it's it it's uh, people always say New York has this energy, and to me it's just New York, you know. But I can imagine someone coming from a small town and coming to New York and seeing all the buildings and seeing these people and all the hustle and bustle. So uh, that energy is in you, and and, and it, the, we're right in the urban chaos and and uh, drama, there's always drama, it was always drama growing up in New York. And I guess that has put in uh, a little push in the music and the creativity, is to have this drama involved. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's been great. And then we went, went, we travel, or, and luckily we're able to travel around the world now and, and play music, it's great.
Nice. That's awesome. New York is one of the most courageous cities out there. I'm originally from New Jersey. So oh, I'm, okay. yeah, I'm so excited to see like all these different influences come into play. That'll be really great. So you have such a full career. You've accomplished so much. You've received the Doris Duke Performing Arts Award and the Village Voice has called you the most consistently brilliant free jazz bassist of all time. What has been your greatest achievement so far? My greatest achievement is like every day when I wake up and can play music is my greatest achievement, you know, and meet wonderful people like you and others and the gentleman sitting in my kitchen. Um, that's that, you know, the achievement is to be alive and to be able to play and to continue to get into the middle of your imagination you know, like creativity, imagination, imagination into activation. And you activate and then you 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 create, you're able to create, you know, um, and things come through you. And so I, I think, um, and you never know what's gonna happen. You know, who's the next person to walk through the door or you'll meet in, in the street. That's why you have to stay open to all possibilities. Nice. You never know. So you seem like a man of the elements. What is your favorite weather to create music in? I'm sure you've never gotten that question before. I've never gotten that question. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to like the rainy days because I, I, I would sit in the house and listen to like Randy Weston and listen to one track called Portrait of Vivian, his mother. And uh, I listened to, had to listen to one track over and over again. And somehow, again, that activated the creativity in me to look out into the clouds, look out into the rain, hear the dripping of water on the leaves. So rain symbols, rain drums, or the idea give you visions like, okay, let's tie a drum set to a tree yeah. and, then, and then have the wind blow through the drum set and have the leaves be the brushes. So all this stuff came to me when I was a kid, you know, or have the uh, tie a saxophone up to a tree and have it, the wind blow through it. And I was convinced that if the wind blew through it, it would not sound like Charlie Parker. <laughs> it would sound a little different. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, that's so funny for me when it rains, I always think like it's such an emotional cleanser for me because for me, if it's raining outside, then I don't have any room to be sad because it's already raining out there. So I have yeah. no choice to, but to be, uh, having a good time. Yeah. Um, all right. So is there anyone that you are really excited to check out this weekend? Well, we arrive on the second and, uh, if we get out there, I'm not even sure the schedule. So uh i would have liked to i think henry threadgill is playing on the first i would like to check them out but we're going to still be in new york on the first but uh carmen lundy plays before us i believe and miguel zenon plays so i like to check out as much music as i can i can check out because in new york you're too busy being in new york sometimes to hear music but on the road you meet people at the airport and it's good to check out and listen to people when it's not a memorial. See, musicians gather when someone dies. And so let's gather when something is being born, like some music. Nice, that's awesome. It's been so great speaking with you today. We are all so excited to watch the William Parker Quartet, again, that's playing Saturday. Quintet. 7.45, Quintet. Yes. Yes, it's playing at Saturday, 7.45, at the Jay Pritzker stage. Thank you so thank much you. for chatting with us. Oh, today. We're thank so you. excited. Thank you.